great historical lecturer or every great work of history needs a bibliography, someone to talk about the books, and I guess I'm the uh, finish to uh, this lecture. Um, I am going to be talking about the uh, book collection, Masonic book collection that we have here at Brock University. That was started by Dr. Sankey uh, back in 1975. Dr. Sankey was the second chancellor here at Brock University and uh, his time was from 1968 to 1974. So a year after he finished his time at Brock University, he felt it was time to donate his uh, personal library of Masonic works to Brock University with the idea that it would be something that would expand and, and grow. And it didn't just end with one single donation. Dr. Sankey continued to donate to the library as well as tell his colleagues in, uh, in the field of uh, Freemasonry to donate the materials as well. There were others who did donate uh, in the future after Dr. Sankey started it. Lawrence Runnels, a noted Masonic historian, donated his book collection uh, to Brock University, as well as uh, the family of Frank Sandring from London, Ontario. Uh, because all these gentlemen were uh, very good collectors of books and shared a lot of the same ideas, they, the duplicates that came from this collection were sold off and became a small endowment which allowed us to buy more books over time. But I don't want to give all the credit to just these three gentlemen. Every time I go into the Masonic collection, I always like to go to the uh, opposite side of the front cover to see the book plate in there. I always find someone new who's donated a book uh, to Brock University Special Collections. And it is uh, really this whole collection's a tribute to a number of people who have donated to the collection. The collection itself, uh, this is just one image of our storage area. Uh, there are over 1,200 items in the collection. It takes up about 40 shelves. There's 40 shelves of monographs or books. Uh, on uh, Freemasonry, as well as uh, um, Lawrence Runnels and Dr. Sankey donated some of their own personal Masonic materials that are in our archives. Uh, there's six shelves of periodicals uh, based on Freemasonry. We have works that are in English as well as foreign languages. Uh, we have uh, uh, materials from Belgium, Iceland, Mexico, Cuba, everywhere. It's really an amazing collection to start thumbing through. And uh, we are proud to say that it is one of the largest uh, Masonic book collections in the Canadian University. And it's something we are very proud to have here at Brock University. And it's all kept in a very uh, secure area in the library on the 10th floor is where the Special Collections resides. Uh, we've recently undergone a, a major renovation where our uh, climate control is top notch, uh, as well as we have fire suppression systems up there and high security. So these are treasures within our library. We take very uh, good care of them and take it very seriously. Just to go over some of the things that you might find in our collection, this is kind of a, a browse by tour. Encyclopedias and histories, um, as well as uh, we have the history of Freemasonry in Canada, uh, various editions. The screen up here is not working, so I keep having to turn it back to see what's coming on. Uh, we have local histories, uh, histories of uh, various lodges, local and beyond the Niagara area. And as you can see here, there's just rows and rows of this type of material. There are books on education, tradition, and ritual within the collection. Uh, this is uh, one of the oldest books that we have on free, uh, dealing with the Freemasonry from uh, 1710. Uh, on the Hermetic Philosophy. Other books that we have in the collection, there is uh, works on Masonic music and poetry. And every now and then you'll, feel, you'll find a beautiful sketch uh, within the book, either done by hand or was part of a print. And there's just a wide variety of books that we have in here. And, uh, all worth exploring. We also have uh, annual proceedings and transactions. Some of the proceedings we have are from the Grand Lodge of Canada in the province of Ontario, Royal Arc, Arc Masons, Scottish Rite, and the Heritage Lodge uh, proceedings, as well as we do have the transactions from the, and excuse me if I say this wrong, uh, Quatuor Coronati Lodge in England. And very recently, in 2006, we've had an endowment uh, from the Heritage 
uh, from the work of the Heritage Lodge number 730 as well as the Grand Lodge of uh, Canada came together to make a significant donation to support the book collection. And with this, uh, these funds, this endowment, uh, we had four things that we uh, are able to do with this uh, money. We can either purchase new books for the library, we can sponsor promotional events, similar to this, we, ha we can take preservation measures, uh, some of the books are very old and do need work, uh, or we can try some digitization efforts. And it's been three years since, and we allowed the money to accumulate, and we are at a point right now, oops, there we go, uh, and this summer we're going to start a digitization project where we're going to be sending the earliest copies of the Proceedings of the Grand Lodge of Canada uh, in, the province in, uh, in the province of Ontario to the Internet Archive, uh, which is based uh, all over North America, but there is a centre in Toronto. And we are going to digitize the earliest proceedings and uh, start moving forward. And if you can bear with me, I'm just going to show a quick example. And it's still there. Great. <coughs> so uh, this is freely available to anyone. It's an initiative to have a free library online. And uh, let's see. <coughs> I spelled it right, and I did. Um, thank you very much to the uh, New York Public Library who actually already digitized five of these items. Um, so I can show a great example of what we envision. So the very first example, here we have the 1881 proceedings from uh, the Grand Lodge. And there's various ways you can look at it. You can read it online, which is really fun to do. You can see, it's very clear. I like using the page turning mechanism. Oh, gotta reduce it. Every screen's different. So if you wanted to flip through. And as well, I get, usually gotta go back. Let's see. I'm really craning my neck, I'm sorry. Um, it's, uh, they've done optical character recognition on these works which is very exciting. If you're looking for something specific, you can go, you can search the entire text. It's text searchable. So if you're looking for a name, uh, uh, an event, or something that happened during that year, you can go in there and it'll show you exactly, what, exactly where it is. So you can see what happened in Niagara back in 1881 or any other lodges within the province of Ontario. So we're very excited about this uh, initiative and we want to see it go forward. And if you cannot open up this on your computer, you can download it as a PDF and as other files. If you have a Kindle, an electronic book, uh, there's various ways of viewing this. So it's very open, very accessible to uh, Masons as well as anyone who wants to take a look at these materials. So just a little bit of uh, brief words about where we are. Like I said, we are on the 10th floor of the uh, library here at Brock University. Uh, our hours are 9.30 to 4.30 on weekdays. And, uh, and a lot of, uh, all the materials that we have in our book collection are available in our catalog online. So before you come visit us, you can actually see what books we have. You can even call us ahead and say, I'm coming. I want to see these books, and we can have it on the, on the table waiting for you before you arrive. And uh, we are very happy to do so. And please <coughs> let me stress that uh, these, collect these books um, are available to anyone to use. They're here for our students and our faculty, as well as for any uh, Freemason uh, who wants to come see it, or as well as the general public. We are open and very accessible, and uh, very willing to help you if you have an opportunity to come by. So I'd like to thank you very much for your time, and I really would love to see all of you, not at once, but, <laughs> but it would be great to see people come in and use this collection. It was great yesterday, um, Dr. Unaforce uh, had a chance to come by and browse, and it's always special to me to see someone who uh, is very well read and knowledgeable say, oh, that's a good one, it's good to have this one, this one's very important, 
I can't believe you have this one. It, it, it is a truly special collection, and uh, we really do want you to use it. So please stop by. Thanks.